Hello guys, welcome back to another episode of the On Demand series in Tux Riders. In this video, we want to have a look at Paraview Glance, which is a very exciting tool to post-process data and simulation results in a web browser. And it means that you can host you know, this app in your websites and show the, your results to the users very easy. So let's go for it. So in addition to, you know, uh, the client uh, or server parts, server components of Paraview that we already discussed in, uh, in the post-processing series, the Paraview ecosystem comes with, you know, more exciting components, one of which is the web components. So in this page, you can uh, see, you know, different approaches that the Paraview team are taking to to port Paraview into into web. So for different renders, different components, even different modules. So this is an example, Paraview web applications. This is LightWiz sort of framework. So Actic Viewer, Data Viewer. And yeah, so these components for Paraview web and uh, also for, for Glance. So in this case, uh, this is actually, you know, you know a Paraview Glance is also part of the uh, Paraview web. But uh, yeah, because it's um, uh, actually, you know, it, com it combines multiple different technologies into one, under one umbrella. It has its own dedicated category in, into the for, for categories of uh, VTK and Parview components. So the first thing that this glance is built upon is ITKJS. JavaScript library to render stuff in, inside of a browser and then for, for Paraview web as I showed you and you can see that these are actually different applications of that. But before going to that, I want to show you how, you know, a simple use case that you can use. For example, I have it on my personal website to in my research page that I talk about my research interests and the, my PhD project and the things that I, I work on. But then I say that as a glimpse into the results, the type of results that I have in my PhD, you can see this. And as you can see, this is actually inside of a browser, but this is a full presentation of the results. The users can go through it and even they can apply. Uh, oh, sorry. They can apply uh, various things to that. So, for example, I want to change this the color of the surface so you can see that they have different components, clip one, clip two, and uh, yeah, I can deselect them or I can hide them. So this is actually part of you. So, for example, for this one, this is actually clip two. I can change the presentation to surface, which is actually the surface. And instead of label, I can say that B, this, this is actually solid color. And uh, yeah, and everything is occurring, everything is being rendered inside of a browser with the help of this, with, with the ITKJS and VTKJS libraries, and also this Paraview Glance uh, web application. So this is, you know, the use case of this, but yeah, if you know how to use it, which is pretty simple, uh, I will show you, you know, in a minute or so. If you know how to use it, then you will find your own applications for it. And uh, this is actually the Paraview, the where Paraview Glance is hosted by Kitware. And uh, you can run part of some of these results, some of the samples, sorry, or upload your own file. I will show you how to create a scene file. It requires a scene file, a special type of export in Paraview, and then you can render it here. But for the use case that I showed you to embed it in a website, uh, I, you, we need some HTML coding or you know calling JavaScript libraries. This is the this is the goal of this video. But uh, you know another more advanced case of using Paraview Glance is to download. So to to go through the GitHub repository and uh, download it, I mean download the whole application, hold the HTML HTML pages, CSS files, and also JavaScript codes into your 
into into your machine and then use it locally but uh, yeah that's uh, that option allows you to customize it so Paraview is is designed with high level of com customizability in mind and as a result you can easily customize it if you have proper knowledge of javascript and the beta of html and css so it can be easily adapted to various applications even for offline usage but we will focus on more on, on online use cases so uh you know we, you need to, to take multiple uh steps the first thing to discuss is probably this code. I will show you how to use this code actually. This is the code that you need to put into, into any web page that you want to host the app. But more important than that is to, to, to prepare the data and for an online use case, put it in a public repository or public place, a public location that everyone can access. Because when a user loads the page in his or her browser, then this is actually their machine that should see the file because the file is downloaded in, the, in their web browser and it's getting rendered there. So in order to prepare it, uh, to prepare the file, we need to use Paraview, obviously, because this is Paraview Glance. And uh, because I don't want to import something, I don't want to import simulation results, I just create a source of Wavelet. So uh, I click Apply. This is a web. Uh, wavelet and um, yeah that is not bad this is cool let's make it even uh, nicer so we click apply we, we create a clip on it and then maybe another clip uh, with this color and then I click apply so this is actually this side I want to have it inverted and yeah this is actually the kind of results that I want to have. And then for solid colors, good. And maybe we can also change part some of the properties of this uh, of this wave, including frequencies. So when I x align the x direction, it will be 100. Yeah, better. Okay, so this is actually the scene. We need to prepare the scene. The scene that we want to visualize on the internet. On the, on the web browser and yeah so I customize it and uh, you you apply any filter that you want to have on on the web browser including all the all the coloring and stuff and any kind of customization if you want to customize the legend I mean the color bar or anything else for for now this suffices I think and then we go for exporting the scene this is something that we didn't discuss in the part of you post-processing series because this is you know an advanced use case and then we select this kind of vdk js files which is which comes with this uh, you know extension vdk js for vdk javascript library and then i put it on for example my desktop and i name it test just as simple as that and then it asks for for you know for more advanced options you can also prepare you know provide it with with uh, uh, the purview glance uh, HTML page but I don't want to do that I want to make I want to do the uh, oh, I want to customize it later on and that's why I don't uh, provide it with the HTML page that's one of the offline applications that I told you so this is the uh, the scene that we want to have and then the next step can be you know should be is up uploading it to to a public location for this case i use github which is um, you know i use my personal account for that but you can also use yours and we have already discussed git and version controlling so this can be also a nice practice for it to to to, sh to show you in action how it works actually so i go to to github I'm not sure if I'm logged in or not no I'm not and then this is my personal github profile and then the repositories it was I think data sets or something yeah data sets and scenes yeah this is something that I, this is a repository intended to host my the scenes that I want to host in web applications but yeah 
we can upload up, update it here but yeah you can also upload it to like these file sharing services or your personal website so the, the, the only prerequisite, the only requirement is it should be visible to anyone. And so GitHub is, is, a, is an appropriate solution, is an appropriate, uh, let's say, choice for that. So now I, I come here. So I, what I need to do is uh, I need to clone uh, the repository. So I say git clone and then I clone the repository because I want to update it. So this is actually, I copy the link and then I clone the repository, oops, on a desktop. Sorry, it should be city desktop and then clone the repository because I want to have it on the desktop. So this is actually the repository. I put it here. So I copy it and then uh, I go to that directory you know we already discussed these things in the version controlling and for for this kind of linux commands on linux navigations uh you can find the relevant you know tutorials relevant resources on the set up your environment series in, and you can find the relevant links here but yeah so uh here we are inside the git repository it says that a new file is added i add it so everything is added now and then I can say that commit it with like add a test case for tox writers Sorry. for tox writers yeah why not I press enter and now if I log it if I say git log I can say that yeah this commit is added here and then I need to push it Git push it asks for my credentials and after uh, entering my credential I press enter and then now it says that it's uploaded so if I go here and refresh the uh, repository I can see that this file is actually added here so you know using git is really as simple as that and now I have nothing to do with this uh, I need the direct link to this file which is uh, as you can see here is this actually this is the web uh, the web link and I, I i can also click on the view route so this is uh the web with the web address actually if i see the download location the download link then this is the the raw link to to the to the binary object and then the next step is to prepare the web page that we want to host the um, the power view glance. I also again I use um, yeah I put I created on a, on on desktop so I go to desktop and then I create a new file called this time I call it test.htm but yeah this is this is this is okay so, and I open it with uh, with Tom. So at this moment if I op open this test.htm it has nothing you can see but uh, I need to edit it so I, I say that this is a, actually an HTML file HTML file and then I close it you know I don't want to go to the HTML this is not something that uh, we want to discuss here and then it's the body and uh, closing the the body so yeah and then here I can say hi and this is something that the web browser can render for me in this case, uh, yeah, uh, this is Mozilla Firefox web browser. And if I want to change it, you know, this is HTML. This is quite simple. And for example, if you want to have the title, you know, this is out of context, but just for fun, I say title. Uh, I say power of you, uh, plans test. Oops, sorry. view glance test and then I close the title uh, tag if I reload it into my web browser you can see that this appears as a title but yeah this is this was just for fun and then I put it high here and then I add the the, uh, the preview glance below it to show you that this is actually a web page so this is the high and then I need the code this code which you can find also in the power view glance or under link of the description and uh, below this video 
uh, yeah. So we need the app here because, you know, in the end it writes, it uses JavaScript document write to create a new iframe tag, iframe component inside this HTML page that I have with a source of the app, of the app variable and a name of the file, which is actually this, fi this file. So this is actually the name. I will modify it later. And then the parameter of URL, which is you know, data directory, the direct link to the file, plus the file name. And this is actually, you know, the, the, the ID for the height and the width of the, of the app. We will, we can also modify it, or we can simply say that it's 100% and height 100%. So in this case, this is test. And if you compare this path with the, with the link of this repository, you can see that, yeah, it's almost the same. I put it here so you can see. It's almost the same. So with this, um, you know, with this uh, subdomain of the GitHub user content or GitHub user contents, and then my username and name of the repository, and then main, and then followed by the by the file by the name of the file. So this is all we we need actually here. So you can really modify this code to to match what you want. And the file location of your file. So if this is a personal website, you can easily uh, put a link here instead of this GitHub repo. And yeah, that's it. Now let's refresh it and see what happens. Yeah. So you can see that I have high here, and that's because I didn't start a new paragraph. Sorry for that. I didn't start a new paragraph, so it is just, you know, after the hi, after saying hi, instead of writing it in the title, after saying hi, uh, it loads the Paraview uh, screen for me. And this is actually the scene file that I created in, uh, in the local installation of Paraview, and then users can s easily interact with this, uh, with these files, with this, um, uh, with this scene actually and they can really easily change also multiple configurations like if they want to change the color uh, let's say um, color figures uh, sorry the color settings like the the color palette that is used or changing the the ranges the data ranges so that's really easy to be done here. But for normal users, that's fine to, to just see this uh, on the screen and then you can easily rotate, zoom or pan it with their, uh, with their mouse uh, clicks. And uh, yeah, that's it. And that's uh, really cool, I think, in my opinion. And so this can be used for various applications and i said and with this you can easily enrich the content of your websites your personal web pages or you know any even presentations so yeah i hope you enjoy this this is yeah quite cool in my opinion uh, but yeah um, I hope you can apply this technique to your, uh, you know, for, for your own uh, usage and yeah, have fun with it. See you later.